Hey, Pastor Gary, again with you for another Wednesday Word. It's great to see you. Uh, hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, we're going to continue our journey through Psalm 23. And so if you could open your Bible up to Psalm 23, and let's look at verses 1 through 6 and, and read God's Word together. God's Word says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's God's word. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just, we come to you right now and we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I pray that you use today's message, Father, just to, Father, speak to our hearts, Father. Let us just glean the message that you have for us, Father. Father, I pray for those that have prayer requests, Father. Father, I stand with them, Father, as we lift these petitions up to you, Father. Father, I pray for those that are, that are struggling, that are hurting, Father. Father, I pray that they just spend some spend time at your feet, Father. Just diving into the word, Father, into your word, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. So in verse 5, David writes, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. And my cup overflows. Now, there are some theologians that, that suggest that David is switching metaphors from, from shepherd to dinner host. And, and there's, you know, there's something to that. And so I want to look at both aspects of those metaphors, both as a shepherd and a dinner host. Uh, be, you know, as far as a shepherd, there's a common expression uh, to describe what a shepherd does to prepare a pastor. And so for a shepherd to prepare a pastor, what he has to do is, first of all, he's got to find the best place for the sheep to graze. I mean, he wants to make sure that he's, that the sheep are feeding on, on good grass and, and that the pastor is, is, is adequate for them to eat. And so what the past, what the shepherd does is he'll go around and walk the area, the table land or the, or, or the, the, the uh, flat plain. And he'll, he'll walk around because he just doesn't let the sheep go run amok. So he'll walk around and make sure there's no poisonous plants, making sure there's nothing that could cause potential injury to the sheep. But he also makes sure that there's no enemies around. And if they are around, that they stay at bay, that they stay away from the sheep. Uh, and, and then ultimately the sheep are able to eat safely knowing that there's no poisonous plants there. And that even though they're in, that there's, that the enemy might be nearby, the, that they're not in any harm's way because the shepherd are, is doing what the shepherd does. And that's his job to, to ensure the safety of the sheep. You know, there's a group of, of Bedouins living in, uh, the desert in Israel. And, and they live this life of, of a nomadic lifestyle. They live in tents and very transient. And they've been doing this since ancient times. And it's their custom that they continue to tend flocks of sheep and, and, and to take care of the sheep that, that are, you know, that they have. And, and so they'll walk through the, the wilderness, through the desert just like King David did as a boy. It's the tradition of the Bedouins to also treat guests with great honor. And, and they deserve the best uh, from the Bedouins. So they'll, they'll give them, they'll, they'll give them food and drink and, and just prepare a meal for them. And they'll actually fight to their own death for their protection, for their guest protection, so that their guests don't come, un come under any harm. And it's this amazing hospitality that was common behavior in ancient times when David wrote that the Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. David probably drew an imagery from his everyday life. By doing so, he gave a beautiful picture of God's love. Even when enemies surround us, God's offer, God offers to protect us and to provide for us, just like the, the, the shepherd is doing for the sheep, just like the Bedouins do for their guests. 
So let's take a, take a look at verse five. The first part of verse five says, you prepare a table before me. Now, the God's table provides nourishment, both physical and spiritual nourishment. The physical nourishment to ensure and maintain physical health. The spiritual nourishment that is required to maintain the spiritual life. If we're not in God's word, if if you know if our tanks are our spiritual tanks are empty, we become more susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. And so that's why we got to have that spiritual meal. The, the, the and, and that's God's word. When we feast on God's word, you know our our spiritual tanks our spiritual tanks are full, and we're prepared from for the attacks of the enemy. You know, God provided for the Israel the Israelites. Uh, he provided food for the Israelites in the wilderness. He provided uh, John the Baptist food in the wilderness. Peter, Peter tells us in First Peter two two that God's word is spiritual food for us. The second thing that God's table does is it provides a place of fellowship. Hebrews 10.25 tells us uh, that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves with other believers. You know, God's table provides a sense of security. Job 8.15 tells us that the worldly security of things of this world will not last. However, spiritual security, the security that we have in Jesus, that will last eternity. The fourth thing that, that God's table provides is a place of acceptance. Hebrews 4.16 tells us, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's look at the second part of verse 5. It says, In the presence of my enemies. Now, the enemy is all around us. The word enemy can mean to treat with hostility or to attack. We are at war right now with an invisible enemy that is stalking us. And although the enemy is present, God is also ever present. And he draws us close to him. Most of us will walk through a valley at some point during our faith journey. You know, we've heard it before because you're either in a valley, coming out of a valley, or getting ready to go in a valley. But know that God is with you at all times. At each one of those phases, God is with you and he's there to protect you. So when we do go, we can count on our shepherd to guide us through safely. So the question is, do you trust God to walk you through the valley? Verse 5 continues to say, you anoint my head with oil. That middle section of verse 5 is rich in meaning. Uh, you know, you anoint my head with oil. If David is referring to a dinner party, he has in mind that the generous host who puts fragrant oil on his esteemed guest forehead. In that day, oil was also used as a sign of rejoicing. Of rejoicing, so to be anointed with it was to be splashed with joy. A shepherd anointed the herds, the, the heads of the sheep with oil to preserve them from sunstroke, insect bites, or to heal wounds. Because, of course, uh, you know, male the male sheep would, would, you know, hit their heads and, and the rams would, would collide their heads as, as they uh, fought in the pasture. And so uh, it, that oil would, would heal any wounds that, that might have caused. Um, and so that's really a beautiful picture of both how a shepherd uses oil anoints the oil you know anoints the the shep the sheep's head for protection and provision but also how the dinner host uses you know anoints the the heads of the guests as a celebration as joy you know to celebrate them being there the word messiah means anointed one and that's a beautiful picture of what the shepherd does for us he deals with our problems by protecting us from those things that can harm us he helps us be in fellowship with others. He comforts us and he heals us when we are beat up. When we, are, when we are wounded sheep in need of a healing shepherd. Do you have any wounds today? If you, if you want the calmness and peace that comes with this psalm, you must become one of the shepherd's flock. You must become one of the shepherd's sheep. Verse 5 ends this way. My cup runs over. Jesus came that we might have life on a permanent basis and that we might enjoy the possession of living more abundantly. Let's look at John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal and, to, and kill and destroy. I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. See, God's provisions are endless. 
but we must be willing to accept them. David tells us in Psalm 23, 5, that he is, that he is expressing his cup running over. This is only experienced by those who have declared Jesus as their only shepherd. And we are seeking to bring every aspect of our lives under the total lordship of Jesus Christ. It is that running over that is missing in most of our lives. And in our giving, in our time, and in our talents. You know, when we limit our, our giving, time, talents, finances, then we limit the, the what God is going to give us because we're, we're limiting God. So how do we get from, get to, get from, how do we get to this running over in our walk with the Lord? Well, the first thing you got to do is turn your cup over. You know, if, if you've ever gone to a restaurant and you see the coffee cup, it's usually turned upside down on the saucer. And so, you know, after dinner, if you want coffee, what do you do? You turn your cup over and you put it on the saucer. On, on the saucer. That triggers the server, that, that lets the server know, hey, you know, they, they want some coffee. And so you, in order for our cup to overflow, our cup's got to be on the right side. It's got to be the right side up, not upside down. Because if it's upside down, you know, God is pouring, but we're not receiving. We're not getting because our cup's not upside, uh, is not right side up. And so we got to turn our cup right side up. Many of us are trying to live the abundant life with upside down cups. We got to be open to believe in God, to receive his fullness. It doesn't do you any good to have your cup upside down. The second thing is, you know, to get this, this to get this point to the point of your cup running over, you got to fix the cracks in your cup. You know, some of our cups are not running over because they're cracked. Cracked from disobedience, cracked from selfishness, cracked from pride, cracked from because of the sin in our life. We need to take our cracked cup to the potter to be mended. Repair the crack of disobedience. Re repair the crack of selfishness. Repair the crack of that, that pride has, has brought into our lives. Repair the crack of sin in our life. Only the master shepherd can mend that crack because he is the center of all and is the true master potter. What is your decision today? Where do you stand with the Lord? Do you want to have that crack cup and have it upside down? Or do you want him to, to mend that crack so that you could turn that cup upside down and have that life and have that life more abundantly in Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Father God, Father God, we do thank you, Father, for the promise of, of John 10, 10, Father. Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, for those of us, Father, that, that do have things that have caused our cups to be cracked, Father, that, that have caused us to, Father, walk away from you, Father that have caused us to turn our cups upside down, Father. Father, I pray that you just, Father, give us the conviction, the courage, Father. Father, to come to you and, and seek forgiveness, Father, so that you can mend us, Father. You can heal us, Father. Father, I thank you for your protection. Father, when the enemy is around, Father, we thank you that you watch over us, Father. Father, and, and you go before us, Father, and, to ensure our safety, Father. We thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Well, again, praying for you. Can't wait to see you on Sunday. Uh, God bless.